boys. March Madness is back. All right, that was good enough. Damn it! We told Lewis not to mess it up. He is now being exiled. That chorus of people you heard. Shame. Shame. Juju Gotti on the right. Taylor Vipolis on the left. Your boy Tende Tony here. Tony Brackets, as you can see behind me. Very important. We are in the Sweet 16, boys. And we have a lot to get to today. We were going to get to what happened in the tournament. Then we're going to get to voicemails from listeners. Then we're going to get to previews for the next couple of rounds because we won't be here to preview the Elite Eight. We're going to give you straight to the Final Four. And then, later on in the show, I'm going to give you my all-socket team. All-socket? Why do you say, what's all-socket? These players are all electric. Mm. Only one of them is still playing right now. But all players on this list are electric. So we'll have the all-socket team coming up. We'll have voicemails coming up. We'll have previews coming up. Everything from March Madness. We will take care of you guys. Boys, what? An incredible weekend. We had a lot of like negative energy surrounding March Madness here on the show. People are like, oh, you can watch hockey. It's cool. It's better. Whatever. Baseball, European soccer, whatever sports Mike Ryan said. Whatever. Not the point. (laughs) The point being, March is back in a massive, massive way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we had incredible games throughout the uh, throughout the weekend. The Thursday and Friday combo of March Madness, everybody talks about it. It's incredible. We had upsets. We had teams taking out the garbage, meaning they had bad teams that they beat. They were supposed to beat them, took out the garbage, did everything well. What region do we want to start in? Do we want to start with my bracket, which is why we're having this show, Tony Brackets? Yeah. Okay, I'm in the 96th percentile of all brackets on ESPN. <laughs> 96th percentile, okay? Is that good or bad? That is, is, it, is it better to be the 96th percentile or the 2th percentile? It means his bracket is better than 96% of other So I'm in the 4% if we're doing brackets. that math. I'm in the 4%. So I'm just going to – we're just going to look down here. My Midwest bracket, that's Purdue number one, Tennessee number two, and all that, missed one game oh. in that entire bracket. It was uh, Utah State TCU. Heat check. So Heat we check. are on we- fire right now. 96% of brackets are, are inferior in comparison to my bracket. Real so, hoopers know. Thank you. Where do we want to start? What, what are the big picture items that we want to get to today? Because there was a lot of things that happened. Is it the upset for Kentucky? Is Coach Cal out? Is it the number one seeds advancing to the, to the Sweet 16 for the first time in, I don't even know how many years it's been. A bunch of them. In, in the last, I, have, I have it here. All four number one seeds in the Sweet 16 for only the fourth time in the past 14 seasons. Uh. I want to get to Coach Cal and I want to get to Kentucky. I was looking at a basketball reference list of guards from Kentucky that have been in the NBA. The guards list in Kentucky is insane. And almost begs the the question, is Coach Cal overrated? Mm, I just want to put that one out there for the people. You're looking at Coach Cal. You're looking at incredible NBA players that he's produced out of that Kentucky program. Yet, they continually find a way to lose Every single tournament in an astonishing way this time. To Oakland from Michigan, okay? I don't know how that happened. Oakland from Michigan, Jack Golke and Dem Boys. To a brother that looked like uh, Freakazoid with, <laughs> with no blue on him. <laughs> 23s. He, he attempted 23s, made 10 of them. Instantly became one of the darlings of the tournament. Taylor, as a staunch basketball, college basketball watcher. Staunch. Staunch. Is Coach Cal at the point of being, you know what, we kind of see the writing on the wall with him? The thing with Coach Cal is he doesn't really care about the tournament success. If you ask him, all he cares about is putting guys in the NBA. And by his standard, he's he's the greatest ever. He's succeeding. The problem, the disconnect is Kentucky fans want wins in March, and they're losing to St. Peter's. They're losing to Oakland. He hasn't advanced out of the first weekend since 2019. (sighs) Which is a million years ago, by the way. <laughs> for, you for think of 2019, you're like, damn, that is so long ago. For a school like Kentucky, the schools like Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, those fan bases don't really care if you're putting the Devin Bookers in the NBA. Right. The Shea Gillis Alexanders <laughs> in the NBA. They want to be cutting exactly. down nets the at the end of the, the tournament. Exactly. Juju, Coach Cal. I think my, my dog is underachieving at this point. If he, if he would have been anybody else without his tenure or, or – 
or his resume, I feel like a, a new coach would have been on the hot seat and it would have been on fire by now. Couldn't wait to get him out of there. So I know that he's getting a lot of people to the NBA, but dare I say people in Kentucky could give a damn. There's a lot of interesting things that I like to look at too when it comes to the conferences that make it into the tournament, right? There's obviously stronger conferences. You think of the SEC, right? Some good teams there. You obviously have Blue Bloods that are playing in that conference. And then you look at the the opposite of success, the failure that they've had as a conference. They've had Auburn losing to Yale for a 13 seed. They've had 5-12 upsets. Kentucky lost. Uh, Wisconsin got part of the Big Ten, but still, James Madison over Wisconsin. Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. There's been a lot of upsets in this tournament. A lot of them have to do with SEC schools. Florida gets upset by Colorado, too. Uh, I had Florida going going deep. I like Clayton. I, I thought he was – college basketball is basically if you have one guy <laughs> that's better than all the other guys, mm-hmm. we can make a run on this Especially team. if he's a guard. Ex- right. Especially if, if he's a guard, you can game. talk yourself into A hundred percent. Like Zach Eady, right? I look at Zach Eady, I'm like, okay, he's the biggest player in the tournament. He's the biggest player, I think, in college basketball, right? There's nobody 7'5", 290 pounds or whatever he is. Right. But – you have to get the ball to him. He can't dribble the floor. He can't make sure that he gets his ball, you know, in open spaces. He can't create his own offense like that. When you have a guard that can do those things, that allows me to believe in your team so much more than if you have a solid big man. Right. Like, a thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Like, Oregon, their guards was going crazy. I salute the, um, damn, what's his name? Croissant? Or what, what's his name? <laughs> Jermaine Cousinard. J- Cousinard. My boy, had, he had the green light because he bringing the ball up. So he might pull from here nor there, you dig? He broke the Pac-12 record for most points through two games in the tournament. He had 72 points <sighs> in two games. Man. Beating Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record. That's That's insane. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. and and they and they caught the L, <laughs> and it's yeah, right, right, and it still didn't matter. But the I I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble with this. I don't want to get in trouble with this. Uh-oh. But it feels like it feels like the take of upsets are great until we get to a certain part in mm. in the tournament <laughs> where then we have a lot of the upsets and we're like, ooh, Oakland versus. Whoever. Right. Uh, not great. Not great basketball. We struggle college basketball as is right now. Right? Like, the, the, the level of hoops in college is good until you see what the pros do. And then you're like, ooh, that actually looks really, <laughs> really bad. Right? Like, every level, when you look back a level, right, middle school basketball is great until you watch high school. Right. Until you watch college. Until you watch <laughs> pros. So, it's like, your thoughts, guys, on would you rather have all chalk make it into the tournament, would you like to have the FAUs, the UMs, the San Diego States, three of the four, you know, final four teams last year that nobody really gave a chance to because nobody really knew anybody on their team? Yeah. I like the upsets sprinkled in throughout, and especially early in the tournament. But like you said, by the time you get to the Elite Eight, you don't want a team who's a a double-digit favorite. And there's a lot of times where those teams can make these crazy runs, the VCUs, the the FAUs, the, these small programs that kind of take on that Cinderella mindset, the Loyola Chicago's. But then there's also the flip side of that where, you know, I went to Carolina. I'm a Carolina guy. Carolina played St. Peter's in the Elite Eight for a trip to the Final Four, <laughs> and it was the least worried I've ever been about it <laughs> because I'm watching the teams warm up pregame, and everybody on St. Peter's, their tallest guy is like six foot six, right. and I'm like, okay, we have Armando Baycott, six foot ten. Like, <laughs> we're going to walk to the tall. Final Four, and then they and then. Ex- they did exactly that, and it was it was a, a non-contest of a game. So I, I do like some upsets. I think that's what makes March Madness great. But you can't have so many to the point where you are getting these these lopsided games because I think at the end everybody wants the the best team to win, and it's most likely going to be one of these top seeded teams. Right. Yeah, I prefer like three and one, like one Cinderella make it to the dance and three fellas because. At the end of the day, nobody wants to see FAU really play anybody ever. If, salute to the foul owls and, <laughs> and congrats to head coach getting in Michigan. But when they get to the, the money, the money start being involved, and you putting them – like you say, when you seen St. Peter's come out there on the court, you would be like, okay, yes, sir. Armando Duarte, you yeah. feel me? So, yeah, I like three and one, maybe one good story, but no, no more than one. And you look at last year's Final Four – San Diego State made it to the championship game. They beat FAU. 
Right. And it was like, I kind of would have rather seen FAU. Right. Right? I wish they would have made Miami play FAU last year that would have been in the new. Final Four to see who goes. But they put them on the opposite sides. Should we reseed? Mm. Once you get to the Final Four, you reseed. And you're like, wait a second, let's see if we can get a better matchup. That would be because fire. Because I remember a couple of years ago, UNC and Duke had an incredible game in the Final Four, and right. it wasn't the championship game. Right. And they sent Coach K ass packing. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. What year was that? Was that 20? That was One? 2022 because Carolina missed the tournament in 2023 as the preseason number one. Yeah. 2022, they went to the Final Four. And going into that Final Four game against Duke, I, I prayed the night before and I was like, God, just let me have this one. And I don't <laughs> care what happens in the championship. <laughs> Bro, I feel like that's the ultimate victory, bro. To beat Duke and send Coach K into oblivion, uh -huh. that's the ultimate UNC victory, bro. Does that, does that matter to you more than a championship? Or would you rather have the championship? <sighs> that is a tough question. In hindsight, I would have rather have had a championship because that's, that, that's something that gets hung up in the Dean Dome. You get a banner for that. Right. But beating Duke in the Final Four is as close to a championship as you're going to get. Ending, and it's ultimate bragging rights. And ending right. Coach K. Yes. Right. Like, that's huge. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bro. All right. You know what? We're going to switch it around. Let's do, let's do a couple voicemails here. We got a couple voicemails. You guys called, left your best hot takes. Juju? Bro, my bad. But I think that the world needs to hear what you just said, though. Reseeding at the Final Four, that's on. only you can get that on Tony Brackett, Come bro. on, man. Because that, that'll be a brilliant idea. At least a lottery ball situation or whatever. So I'm that's with right. you, bro. That's right. That's right. We put in. everything in, in a brrr, one of those lottery bingo right. things. You make it to the Final Four. Anything can happen. Right. Right? Like it's a made-for-TV event, too. It really is. You feel me? The Final Four seeding, the reseeding of Final Four would go crazy. Hashtag Tony Brackett. You know where you heard it first. Come on. If you heard it somewhere else... They copied it from right here. You did. Let's do the voicemails. Yo, first of all, shout out to you, 10 Day. God bless you for bringing back Rafael Dia, real linguist snow. Mm. Speaking of which, Calabasa, Calabasa, Tolo Mundo Pasu Casa. That's directed at your Yukon Huskies, my friend. Iowa State, the Cyclones, coming for that crown. <laughs> Sean Gilbert and them boys. Ames Iowa, stand up. <laughs> I'm predicting not only will they beat Yukon and make their way to the Phoenix, but they're going to win the whole damn thing once they get there. And you know it. Wow. This <laughs> with an and you know it. Okay. I wish he would have said his name. Did he say his name? No. We didn't get his name. Okay. Well, his name, he, I know he's smoking some stuff. Un, unnamed Iowa State Cyclone fan. Illinois is a tough team to play. Illinois is, ha, has a very good offense. Iowa State has a very bad defense, if I'm reading the metrics correctly. Iowa State has the number one defense. <laughs> I'm reading the metrics incorrectly. <laughs> they have the best defense. It's and a, Illinois yeah. has a great offense. Yeah. So it's a matchup of strength versus strength. Strength versus strength. Right. You always talk about who can do what. When you have best offense versus best defense, mm -hmm. what's going to happen here? Reminder, your bracket is in the 96%. 96%. <laughs> no, I, I read it wrong. Yeah. I didn't have my glasses on when I read it. Right. Uh, but, look, I do have UConn. I think that they are probably the best team left. I liked UNC. Taylor, Taylor pushed me off of UNC to win the, the whole thing, even though I like that their collective age is 29 and a half on that team. Um, I like experienced guard play, so that's a very important uh, distinct, distinction. But it feels like, when was the last team that went back-to-back? Because -back? UConn won last year. The last team to go back to back in a final, f I mean, is it like UCL? Oh, it's the, it's the Gators. My bad. Gators 06 07. Yo, Kim Noah. Yeah, Joe Kim Noah and them boys. Al Horford. Al Horford. Yes, sir. Can we pull up that team? Can you <laughs> see if you could pull up that team for me to see who was on that team? Hell yeah. 06 07, Florida Gators, last team to, uh, to repeat. I feel like Ohio State was. The band used to play. Da 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 You can call me Al. Corey Brewer, Joe Kim Noah. Oh, Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer is a good one. Joakim Noah, Al Horford. Spates, Al Horford. Mo Spates. Oh, Mo, Mo Spates. Mo Spates off the bench. Big dog. Right. Billy Donovan's Thick coach. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do another voice phone. Hey, 10 Day Tony. This is Bourbon Toast Warren. Hey, man. Who is going to be the new Blue Blood? Who are you deeming the new Blue Blood? Blue Blood. Thanks, 10 Day Tony. Again, it's Bourbon Warren. Hey. The boy Bourbon Warren. Um, I'm looking at my I'm looking at my teams uh, here in the round of 16, and it feels like 
year in and year out. There's two teams to me that are consistently in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight. One team has had a lot of success, but I don't know if we'd call them a blue blood. One team is had success back in the day and is now getting more success currently. I feel like those the two teams that I'd feel like are most blue are, are ready to step into the moniker of Blue Bloods is I'd say Houston. I feel like Houston had the legacy play of back in the day, right? The Houston Five Slamma Jamma went off for a while. Now is back, seem, seemingly always a one seed, always going deep in the tournament, always has good, team, good teams. The other team I would say, are they Blue Bloods? Gonzaga. Mm. Would you consider Gonzaga a Blue Blood team? Again, had success. Had some players back in the day, have Adam Morrison, even further back than that, John Stockton. Right. You look at those teams, you're like, there's the the formula that we make for Blue Bloods. Do you have legacy? Right? Do you have a legacy program? What have you done for me lately, Eddie? Yeah. As Jayden Eddie Murphy Suggs. once says. Jalen Suggs and them boys. Exactly. I'd I'd say those are my two teams. I'd say Houston and I'd say Gonzaga right now. Out of the teams that are left. Yeah, are the teams that I'd say are closest to getting blue blood treatment than anybody else. And Houston got a legend coach as well, so yeah, definitely. Kelvin Sampson, you the did. boy. Hey, Tony Brackett's uh, still on a mobile phone. First time, long time. Love the show. Great mm. show, man. Thank you. Anyway, uh, quick NCAA uh, March Madness question for you. Of the teams remaining, of the teams remaining, 16, which team has the most experienced guard play? Also, mm. Was anyone else talking about North Carolina State back in January other than that guy, Stugatz? <laughs> Amazing. He's incredible. Right. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, Stu on a mobile. Uh, he was the only one really talking about NC State. I know Taylor obviously watches all ACC games, contractually obligated to talk about UNC and the in-state rival of NC State. But it seems like nobody was really talking about except for, for Stugatz. Right. Somehow that slipped <laughs> under the radar for everybody. I don't know how. I don't know why. Uh, to answer Stu's question, there's no other team that has more senior guard play than UNC. I said I said it tongue in cheek, but <laughs> I was actually only four years off. Their average combined age is 25. Right. <laughs> salute how? To DJs. Salute to the DJs. Is it, is it Armando Baycott's just 37, so it kind of like brings everything down? Why is everybody so old on your team, Taylor? Armando Baycott is 24 years old. I'm pretty sure. He's not the oldest player on the team. It's Cormac Ryan. Cormac Ryan, the Notre Dame transfer, is 25. He how is many the oh, only man. player born in the 90s on the Carolina. Oh my 98. god! Me and Baycott went to middle school together. For real. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like he's been there forever. He's been there since before the pandemic, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's like, <laughs> we're talking about five years ago. His first tournament got canceled. Because of the pandemic? Because of the pandemic. Right. Him and Cole Anthony were in the same recruiting class. Oh, my God. And it feels like Cole Anthony's been in the NBA for forever. Right. He had he did them Timberland boots and a dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> Baycott still hooping in the UNC. <laughs> I forgot about the Tims. <laughs> Armando Baycott plays like he's wearing Tims the entire time. <laughs> Lead feet. Uh, <laughs> UNC. That's, that's the answer, Stu. UNC. Uh, let's do a couple more. Oye, eh, este mensaje es para Tony Braque. Oye, Tony Braque, Dime. me dicen que tú eres el tipo de, de los Braque. Yo estoy haciendo un closet en mi casa, brother, y quería saber cuánto cuestan unos Braque. <laughs> ok, bueno, llamo más tarde. Bye. <laughs> I know what he said, but I don't think Juju knew what right. he said, if you could explain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> ok, ok, um, I think this guy may have been confused. What he did is he called, he said, Tony Brackets, um, I know that you're the guy that does the brackets. I'm redoing my closet. How much would it take for you to come out to my uh, house and do the brackets? Hey, so he wanted uh, an uh, estimate uh, on closet <laughs> repair. <laughs> Primo, no. Gracias, pero no. Hey I, hey, I feel like you might know a little something, though. Hey, I mean, you I can always. You and Jenny moved a I, couple times. Come on, I can always put a bracket together, you know. That. <laughs> That's why they call me. Tony Bragg, that's why you see this this face back here. I don't know if you could put wide shot here. Right. That's that's a face of trust right there. I trust it. That for means sure. I got you. <laughs> Let's play another one. Ten day Tony. Hell of a job on the bracket, my man. Salute to you. Thank you. I got two questions for you. First, what one seed 
do you think is most likely to make it out of the weekend? Mm. Second, who is the highest speed you think will make it out of the weekend? Thank you, sir. I appreciate you and everybody at the show. Happy birthday, Brusco. Hey. Happy birthday, Brusco. Um, excellent questions. Uh, what's the number one seed most likely to make it out of the weekend? Uh, I'm going to stick with UConn because I have them going all the way. I have them winning. So I need, I need UConn to be the one seed that makes everything <laughs> through. And when we're talking about highest seeds, we have kind of a chalk mix this year. There's a lot of... I'm just going to read you through East West. 1 5 3 2. 1 4 6 2. Mm. 1 4 11 2. 1 5 3 2. Like a lot of chalk made it to the. Uh, to the. I mean, at 11 is the ACC champs. Is the ACC champs, <laughs> right. NC State, right. Wolfpack. Um, I have to check because. Uh, I, I want to check my bracket here because I don't want to say something that's. Uh, that's incorrect. I've got. I've got all cho- I basically got all chalk moving up. I've got UNC UConn in the final four and I've got Houston Tennessee in the final four. That's that's my yeah. those are my two my two picks. So what I want to see, I want to see NC State. But that would also tank Houston who I have in the finals. So I can't do that. So the answer for me is going to be Tennessee. University of Tennessee, they're going to beat Creighton, then they're going to beat Purdue in the Elite 8 head to the final four. So I'm taking Tennessee as my lowest seed, which is a 2. And then I've got UConn, my number one seed, which will be the one seed to make it out uh, of the weekend. Nice. You have one more in there? No more. All right. Let's get to the all-socket team. All-socket team. Why do you well, – all-socket team. I don't get it. Why? Because all the guys that I'm about to mention to you are all electric players. Do we have the, uh, the fanfare? I see a button labeled fanfare. I'm just going to press it. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it works right now. All right. (laughs) Okay, that was just for it working. Perfect. All right. At guard for our all-electric team. We have a lot of guards on this team, by the way. It is what it is. Uh, Guard for our electric team. Number one, Boo Booey. (laughs) Electric player, as all of them are here on this list, but almost single-handedly took Northwestern. Uh, somewhere I don't know where because they weren't going to make it <laughs> to the final four. But Taylor, they ran into a buzzsaw. UConn. I mean, you know, I didn't want to say it. I know, obviously, Greeny thinks that UConn can make the uh, the NBA playoffs in the East. Uh, we won't get there. But Boo is a great player. Gets into the paint. Has touch with both hands around the rim. Great floater game. Can get to a spot on the court. I really like Boo Booey. Number two, our second guard, <laughs> Kasei Tomenaga. Hello. Japanese Steph Curry. The dude is electric. Lefty can shoot from anywhere. He started off really high. I think three for three in his game against Texas A&M. And then kind of the wheels fall off. I saw him shoot a couple air balls. I was like, ooh. It felt like we were getting a moment. <laughs> we were. It felt like three for three. I was like, oh, my God. He's going to have 40 tonight. like the MJ, like, shrugs. Yes, guy. Right. yes. And then he kind of, like, goes like this to his face, like, smushes his face. I was like, oh, my God. We were about to have a legendary performance. And then can we see what he shot that game? He finished that. 7 of 17, 40% from the field, 5 of 11 from 3. You know? Really, that Nebraska team had no business at all being right. like a tournament team if it wasn't for him. At all. One he adorable was, cry he had as well. Exactly. Just so touching. Uh, him and his girlfriend, salute. He was just so good in that uh, in the tournament. Not only the tournament, but that first, in the conference tournament, but then also in that first game where I was like, oh, wait a second, we're going to get something special. We ended up getting uh, an electric performance from him. All right. At the forward spot, a guy that everybody wanted to talk about, that he's probably going to be playing in the NBA because of how much we talked about him during this tournament, Jack Golke. Hey. There is, if, if Duncan Robinson can make a $90 million contract, Jack Golke can play in the NBA. Yeah, you're right about that, for sure. At least $20 million. I mean, <laughs> for the Raptors. He, he can be on somebody's bench, come out, shoot 15 threes, and make six of them. Yep. He can absolutely do that. He's, uh, he's our forward there. We're going to have to play fast and loose with forwards here because it is what it is. Uh, our other forward, Jermaine Cousinard. Oh, yeah. Oregon. Guy can certify bucket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he's also in the Venn diagram of certified buckets. I think all electric team kind of is a certified bucket list too. Boo Very Bowie, similar. Kese, Cousinard, Jack Golke. Yep. Buckets, all of them. Even though Jack Golke, uh, we were talking about it 
when it originally happened, Taylor, you and I, um, you had texted me, hey, Golkey's only attempted eight two-pointers this entire yeah. season. <laughs> 372 field goals, field goal attempts this season. 364 three-point <laughs> field goal attempts. That, and how many twos he made, like one, two? Uh... He made a couple of twos. Okay, okay. But my man does not go inside the paint. <laughs> Unless it's for a down screen, he is not going in the paint. Oh, my God, bro. Can, can we do the percentage of how many two like, percentage-wise, how many twos he shot? It was, what, eight of a segment we like to call math on, on radio. <laughs> You're putting me in a bad spot. I know. Eight divided by 357? 372. Three, 372 divided by eight. Yeah. A very, like, point point zero zero two percent of his shots. Um, all right, and at the center position, the big dog, DJ Burns from NC State. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> DJ Burns from NC State. I just like seeing big guys like that. Right. <laughs> right? Like him, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. When we look at those guys that a couple of years ago say, you know what, this guy – this guy cannot be playing hoops. At all. And then you see him in there bodying people, little baby jump hooks, finishing around the hoop. I love that. He's, so He's right. listed at 6'9", 275. I've seen him in person. He's, he's not 275. He's, he's easily over 300 pounds. For real? And they call him, his nickname, the Dancing Bear because of how light he is on his feet. <laughs> oh, oh my God, bro. This is March. I, I hate how likable this <laughs> NC State team is. Right. Zach this Randolph is Madrid. That's exactly. what he looks like, Zach Randolph. He's, so he's 6'9", probably three bills plus. But, again, light on his feet, finishes around the hoop, nice little J. Like, this is a good, this is a good player. So, all electric team, Boo Booey, Keisei Tominaga, DJ Burns, Jack Golke, Jermaine Cousinard. Those are our list for the all-socket team. Do we have enough really quick to go through and build out our final four? Ooh. Really quick, really quick. We're not going to take too much time on this. All right, UConn, San Diego State. We're taking UConn, yeah? For yeah. sure. Okay. Illinois, Iowa State. Mm, I got I'm Illinois in this one. I think I'm offense taking, beats defense. Yeah. Salute to the caller, but I'm going Illinois as well with you, bro. Okay, Taylor. I like Iowa State, but I'll okay, go. I'll, I'll go with the group. I'll put Taylor Iowa State. Okay, uh, <laughs> we're moving over to the West. North Carolina, Alabama. North Carolina has to win. This UNC, game. yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a must win game. Yes, I'm upgrading it. Yes, Whoa! Sir. I guarantee North Carolina wins. Wow, I like that. Okay. Uh, moving on, Arizona hasn't made it to the Elite Eight or Final Four in a long, long time. Clemson versus Arizona. Mm, Arizona for sure. I like Arizona in this just because it sets up the matchup North Carolina versus Arizona. Wow, Arizona the has the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Caleb Love, right? who transferred tough too. from North Carolina. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, love hurts. Okay, uh, moving on to the South Region, Houston versus Duke in a banger of a game. Really good game. <laughs> Houston, Houston, H Town, Houston. Okay, Taylor. I'll, I like Duke. Oh, oh, oh clip it, clip it. Oh my God. Duke's got good guards. Clip it. Okay, Taylor Taylor picks two. All right, uh, NC State Marquette. Marquette. Oh, Marquette? I'm going Marquette? Are you sure? Yeah. All right, Shaka Smart and them boys. Are Ooh. you sure? I've, I want this NC State team to win, though. Right, that's what I have. I want this team to win. I'm going NC State. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put Taylor down for Marquette. And uh, I mean, you're going NC State. For sure. Let's go, DJs. All right, uh, in the Midwest, Purdue Gonzaga. Mm. It's a tough one, Purdue. It's a, Kate, Taylor, you called for it. Legacy moment for Purdue right now. Yeah. If you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Zach Eady is two-time. He's going to be a two-time National Player of the Year. No Final Fours to show for it. I've got Gonzaga. Wow. <laughs> Juju? I'm with my boy Taylor. Nah, Zags, I feel like the Zags are just a better team, man. Salute to Zach Eady, but the Zags are zagging. I think I'm going to zig. Ooh. <laughs> I think I'm going to zig here. I'm taking Purdue. I'm going to take Purdue. Zigging against the Zags. <laughs> Zigging against the Zags. All right, last game of the uh, of the bracket here. Creighton and Tennessee. You guys know where I stand. I'm taking Tennessee to go to the Final Four. Yeah. So I'm on Tennessee. Yeah. I also have Tennessee. All right, Tennessee all the way down. All right, really quick. Houston. Oh, we can't we can't even do it this way because we have we we have we all different. we all different picks. <laughs> you give yours. All right, you're the one in the 96. percent Thank you. I right, appreciate that. right. Who are we? All right, I'm going UConn to get to the uh, final four over Illinois. I'm taking UNC over Arizona. That sets up U uh, UConn versus UNC in that side of the bracket. On the other side of the bracket, I'm taking Houston over NC State or Marquette, whoever it is, doesn't matter. And I'm taking Tennessee. And then from there, that's our final four. UConn. 
UNC, Houston, and Tennessee. Nice. Which is a one, 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 two. Mm. That was your initial Final Four. That was you, my initial Final Four. Final Four I have all my Final Four teams still alive, boys. Uh, I want to thank Juju. I want to thank Taylor for putting this together. Uh, Tony Brackets. You know, that's what we do around here. In the 90 sum up percentile, we still have mad, mad, mad points to go on the ESPN Bracket Challenge. We are living life. We are all over the place. Let's see. What? Uh, I'm going to do a little Tony Rally here. Right here. Main, sh main shot. Hey. 